Hey guys, welcome back to this video on the level, uh, 2019 level 2 calculus exam paper walkthrough. So we're going to be doing question 2 in this video. So question 2a, the graph of a function y equals to f of x is shown on the axis below. Uh, both, as, uh, both sets of axes have the same scale. Alright, so we have our f of x is a positive cubic with turning points at about negative 2.5. Uh, sorry, it's about, it's about negative 2.5 here. And we also have a turning point at about it's about 4.5 here. So turning points are at negative 2.5 and 4.5. So when we differentiate, uh, we know the gradient here is 0. Uh, so gradient uh, and gradient is 0. Uh, so basically, uh, when you're doing the gradient function, we know that this is the point where the graph will cut the x-axis. So our graph will cut the x-axis at Two, negative 2.5, which should be here. And we also have 4.5, which is here. All right, I mean, also know this is a positive cubic, so therefore our shape of our parabola will also be in the positive shape. Uh, the question doesn't give you any more um, specifications, so we're just going to draw any uh, any positive parabola with, uh, with the... Um, with the X intercepts at neg negative two point five and four point five. So if we just sorry, I can't I can't draw very well on the digital, but hopefully you get what I'm trying to say. Yeah, that should be something like that. Okay, my drawing isn't very good, but unfortunately, but yeah, this is x equals to negative two point five here, and this is x equals to four point five here. Yeah, I'm thinking this question should only be an achieved question, achieved math of this question. Alright, a function p of x if it has a derived function given by gradient function of p of x is 5 minus 8x cubed. The graph of p of x passes through 2, negative 25. Find the equation of p of x. So this is a pretty pretty common question. So we have our gradient function and we're asked to find the... Um, the function given one point that the function passes through. So in this question, we're going to be integrating. So we're going to integrate uh, p dash of x back to p of x. That should give us 5x minus 2x to the power 4 plus our c value, which we don't know yet. All right, so we know the graph passes through um, 2, negative 25. So when the, when, the, <clears throat> when the y value is negative 5, the x value is 2. So we're going to substitute those points in. Negative 25 equals 2. 5 times 2 minus 2 times of 2 to the power 4 plus c. And if we um, use our calculator, 2 times, we should get that our c value is um, negative 3. So therefore, we can read out our p of x as equals to 5x minus 2x to the power 4 minus 3. And that should give you another achieved mark for this question. Alright, so consider the graph of the function f of x is equal to negative 2k squared x cubed plus 3kx squared plus 12x minus 25, where k is a positive constant. <laughs> it's a mouthful. Um, use calculus to find the expressions in terms of k for the range of values which makes the graph increasing. Okay, so justify, uh, justify clearly. Okay. For this question, um, it's very similar to past year papers, except for the fact that they do not give you real numbers, they give you um, k. They give you the constant k instead of um, using real numbers. So uh, we should follow roughly the same steps, okay? So uh, we should be differentiating first, first steps first, to so differentiate should give us um, negative 6k squared x squared plus 6kx plus 12. Um, that's our gradient function. And uh, we want this to be increasing, so we want f dash of x to be greater than 0, because that's when the gradient is greater than 0, and that's when it's increasing, therefore. So we have our f dash of x will be greater than 0 when increasing. So therefore, we can write our equation as 6, negative 6k squared x squared plus 6kx plus 12 is greater than 0. 
Right, so um, I heard a lot of people got stuck on this step and didn't know what to do. So uh, first things first, we've got to find our roots and then give it a range of values. So in order to find our roots, right now we have a pretty, um, pretty tricky equation. Uh, we want to find for x. So uh, this uh, notice there's um, there's k squared x squared and then just just k x. So if you see this, we can rewrite this equation as six negative six times of k x to the power of two plus six k x plus twelve, which is greater than zero. So notice that we might we actually have a hidden quadratic here. So we can say that we can say for example we can make our k x equal to u. So we can say let k x be u. And that makes our life a lot easier because we can just put u instead of uh, we can put u instead of kx. So our equation simply becomes negative six u squared plus six u plus twelve, and that's greater than zero. So all we have to do now is a little bit of graphics calculator work. So negative six, six and twelve. So we should get our u is equal to two, or u equals to negative one. All right. So however. These values of u is occurs at the turning points. Okay, so this is when x equals to zero. That's all, no, no, this is when well, our gradient is equal to zero. Okay, so when u equals to two or u equals to negative one, our gradient is equal to zero. However, we want it for when it's greater than zero. However, first things first, we want to find for our um, we have want to find for our x in terms of k. So we have our k x equals to two or kx equals to negative 1. And we want to rearrange in terms of x. So we have x equals to 2 over k, or uh, or x equals to negative 1 over k. All right, so notice that, so basically coming back to what I was just saying, so basically when x equals to 2 over k, or when x equals to negative 1 over k, this is the turning point. Okay, so this is our x values of the turning point, and this will be our f dash of x equals to 0. However, we're not done because we want it when it's increasing. So when f dash of x is greater than zero, not when it's equal to zero. So we're not quite done. Uh, the easiest way to approach uh, approach this question now is um, possibly a drawing a, a rough sketch of the of the um, gradient function. Okay, so our gradient function will be in the shape of a, a positive parabola because our a value is negative. So our a value here is negative, so it's a positive parabola. So we can roughly draw our uh, Positive, pra um, positive negative parabola here, and uh, we can label our roots. So we can go back to the question that says um, k is a positive constant, so therefore k is positive. So therefore, because k is positive, that means this negative 1 over k must be smaller than this 2 over k, because negative 1 divided by a positive number is still negative. However, a positive number divided by a positive number is still positive. So this will be always be positive, and this will always be negative. So hence, we can know that negative 1 over k will definitely be smaller than 2 over k. So therefore, we can label our roots. We know this is always negative, and we know this is always positive, okay? So we can label this turning point on the left-hand side as negative 1 over k. We can label this one on the right as 2 over k. Alright, so we want it when it's increasing. So that's when the gradient is more than zero. And this occurs uh, when the graph when the graph of f of x is above the x-axis. So it's above the x-axis, as you can see, between these two um, turning points. Okay. So this is our graph of f dash of x, and it's increasing in between. So therefore we're gonna write our answer as um negative one over k is small uh sorry it's x is greater than negative 1 over k, but smaller than 2 over k. And that is your final answer. In terms of the justification, um, I would definitely mention, I would have definitely mentioned the negative, uh, negative 1 over k is always negative, and 2 over k will always be positive, and therefore we, I'll draw this graph out and then label when it's increasing, and therefore we, I would, um, I would uh, state my final range of values. So in terms of getting the final range of values, that's definitely an excellence level, the, uh, excellence level analysis to get the um, correct range of values plus justification. In terms of a merit, I'm thinking if you just do, if you just did the um the range of values with no justification, that would definitely get you at least a merit, or a merit might be up to here. So if you get x equals to negative 1 over k and x equals to 2 over k and you didn't do anything else you might also um, clutch your merit grade for this part so merit grade for 
up to here and possibly an achieve grade ooh an achieve grade um maybe just perhaps just differentiating might get you an achieve grade so differentiating and maybe the statement here plus differentiation might get you an achieve mark for this question yeah, once again, don't quote me on any of this because I haven't seen the marking schedule, so I have no idea what they're going to do with it. So it's just a rough estimate based on um, past year papers about these grading boundaries. But yeah. All right, moving on. The diagram below shows the graph of the gradient function y equals to f dash of x of a function y equals to f of x. Both, uh, both sets of axes have the same scale. The graph of the function passes through the origin, which is 0, 0. On the axis below, sketch the graph of the function f of x, okay? So basically, this is our f dash of x, and our gradient is 0 when x equals to 2. So when x equals to 2, our gradient was 0. And when our gradient is 0, that must also mean that it is our turning point for our parabola. Uh, also, good thing to note down is the shape of the linear graph. The shape of the linear graph is negative, it's decreasing, so this is a negative shape. So therefore, our parabola will always also be negative. So it will be in this, sh this shape here. So it would be frowny face, <laughs> frowny face parabola. And we also must note down that it passes through the origin, which is 0, 0. So we know our turning point is at x equals to 2. And we also have our graph has to pass through our origin. So I'm thinking the easiest way to draw this one is possibly something like this. Okay, that's not a very good drawing, sorry. Let me... Ah, it's a bit better, but yeah. Our turning point is supposed to be here, so at x equals to 2. Passes through the origin, so origin 0, 0. And it also has a negative shape, negative shape. So all of these points should be considered. So I'm thinking this should be a uh, merit level question actually, considering that there was a lot of requirements, so it had to pass through the origin, and um, yeah, I'm thinking this should be a merit grade, and an achieved grade if you can, uh, maybe just two out of three requirements perhaps might get you an achieved, I'm not, I'm not too sure on that one. But I'm pretty sure this would be a merit level question, considering the requirements of the question, but yeah. Don't quote me, once again, I have no idea. <laughs> Alright, a car travelling at a constant speed of 28 meters per second on a straight road is approaching a corner. The driver applies the brakes and decelerates at a constant rate of 4 meters per second per second until the car reaches the corner with a speed of 10 meters per second. Use calculus to find how far the car was from the corner when the driver first applied the brakes. Okay, so when, from, when the first applied the brakes and justify your, oops, justify your answer. Alright, so this is our kinematics question here. Uh, our, our deceleration, so our acceleration was decelerating at 4 meters per second per second, so we can jot that down. So our acceleration, not red pen please, um, our acceleration was negative 4 uh, meters per second per second. And our initial speed was 28 meters per second. Okay, so we have our A, we have our A is negative 4 meters per second per second per second and we can integrate this to find our v of t so our v of t will be the integration of a which is negative 4 t plus c however we knew that initial speed so it was traveling at 28 meters per second before it hit the brakes so basically when t was zero our v was actually 28 so therefore our c is also 28 so our v of t should be negative 4 t plus 28 Alright, so I want you to find how much distance has it traveled when the car has a speed of 10 meters per second. So uh, we want to find how long it takes for the car to slow down to 10 meters per second first, and then substitute this time into our uh, distance equation in order to find out how much distance he's traveled, uh, he or she has traveled in this time. So basically, if we substitute our velocity equals to 10, we can rearrange to find out time. So if we rearrange this equation, negative 18 equals to negative 4t. And t looks like it should be 4.5. Yes. So t equals to 4.5 seconds. So we want to find how much how how much distance has the car traveled 
in 4.5 seconds, given, um, given that the V of t is negative 4t plus 28. So that's, so next step would be to integrate again. So S of t is equal to negative 2t squared plus 28t plus c. All right, so in this case, our c value would be 0. And the reason why it's 0 is because um, when the car, the, the distance is only measured after the brakes is hit. So assuming that the journey starts when the brakes was hit, then technically there was no distance traveled when the time was zero. So therefore our C value can be considered as zero. So we can say our statement would, so basically when T equals to zero, our distance was zero. So therefore our C equals to zero. And now all we have to do is substitute our T equals to 4.5 into our equation. So S of 4.5 equals to negative two times of 4.5 squared plus 28 times of 4.5. So if we do this real quick, times negative 2 plus 20. We should get our distance should come out to be 85.5 meters. And that would be your final answer in terms of your distance. However, it says to um, justify your answer. I'm not too sure what this is asking, but um, my opinion is I think I think uh, if I was doing this test, I would probably would have just uh, talked about the whole process of your equation, but in words. So basically, I would say um, uh, something like this, perhaps. So maybe um, it uh, takes 4.5 seconds for the car to slow from 28 meters per second to 10 meters per second, given a equals to negative 4. Uh, no, no, not 4.5, just negative 4. So it takes 4.5 seconds for the car to slow from 28 meters per second to 10 meters per second, given that the acceleration was negative 4. And in this, uh, and in this 40, not 45, uh, 4.5 seconds, in this 45 seconds, the car traveled 85.5 meters. Hence, the car was 85.5 meters away from the corner. Uh, it was 85.5 meters away from the corner when the brakes was first applied. So perhaps something like that would be a good enough justification for your answer. So hopefully that would be good enough. So. I'm pretty, uh, this is um, another excellent question, so I'm assuming if you have the distance correct and you have a good enough justification, you'll definitely get your excellence grade. In terms of your merit, I'm 100% sure that you'll definitely get at least a merit grade for getting at least 85.5 meters, okay, so an R grade for getting 85.5 meters. And in terms of your achieved grades, I'm thinking if you find T equals to 4.5 seconds, that will be an achieved. Uh, that'll be an achieved grade for you. So I think that's how this question will be graded, but I'm not too sure. But yeah, achieve for finding four point five seconds, and merit grade for finding the distance, and an excellence for finding the distance and a correct justification. Alright, so thank you for watching part uh question two for the two thousand nineteen level two calculus video. I will be uh, the next one up will be the question three, which I'll cover, which is the most controversial question, I'm pretty sure. All right, so stay tuned for that one.